I'm Wally Zhang from Xi'an University and one of these webinars organizer. So today is my big pleasure to introduce you our first speaker, Professor Jing Da Tang from Xi'an University. Professor Tang has done a lot of excellent work on numerous topics, including soft robots, 3D printing, fatigue of materials, and adaptation. And Professor Tang is one of my teachers in Xi'an University, and I'm so impressed about his hard work and academic insights. So we are, we are so excited to have Professor Tang to share his vision and work for 3D printing soft material, fatigue, adhesion, and functions. Now I will pass the speaker to Professor Tang. Okay, thank you, Wenli, for the introduction. So uh, thank you for the committee for inviting me to give this talk. So I'm Jing Da Tang from Xi'an Jiao Tong University. Today I will talk about 3D printed soft materials, focusing on fatigue, adhesion, and functions. So here is a brief biography uh, for myself. Now I work uh, in Xi'an Jiao Tong University as an associate professor. My research mainly uh, focus on the soft materials. So for decades, the scientists want to mimic soft tissues. So uh, if we look at our soft tissues, they are natural hydrogels. Look at our skin, our muscle, and our cartilage. The water content for these, uh, for these soft tissues is very high. So these tissues also have very complex shape heterogeneous structures. The mechanical properties for these uh, tissues like our muscle and hard wall, they are very tough and fatigue resistance. In our hard wall, it can beat for 100,000 times per day. It's very, very fatigue resistance. So if we look at uh, its microstructure more carefully, we can see that it's actually fiber reinforced structure. So, Recently, people can do 3D printing. Yeah, they can mimic the complex shape and the heterogeneous structure of the uh, natural organs. So people already printed many materials like the skin cartilage, heart wall, and kidney. So they can also print the breathing organ and the whole heart. But all these uh, printed hydrogels, they are mechanically weak. So nature is our teachers. So scientists always want to uh, learn from nature. Actually, soft tissues have a lot of good attributes, like their modulus, strength, toughness. And they have complex shape. They have heterogeneous structures. And they are fatigue resistant. And they have good adhesion between multi-materials. But for synthetic hydrogels, there are still many issues unsolved. Like, so synthetic hydrogels are always uh, homogeneous and they are fatigue prone and uh, it's hard to adhere hydrogels to other materials. So I will uh, introduce the uh, issue one by one. The first one, I will introduce the uh, fatigue of soft materials. So if we look back, uh, if we look at the developing history of hydrogels. Actually, the first generation of hydrogel is very brittle. It's just like jello and tofu. So the material scientists spent 10 years to mimic the modulus strength toughness of soft tissues. Professor Jin ping they invented a double network hydrogel as strong as a cartilage. And Professor Zhu Gang Zhuo from Harvard University, they invented another double network hydrogel mimicking the high toughness of natural rubber. But all these tough hydrogels are only tough for one loading cycle. It means that when you load them for uh, many cycles, it become brittle again. So my first project at Harvard is to uh, test the fatigue property of hydrogels. So at that time, uh, my advisor, Zhe Gang, he had a hypothesis. He said that PAM hydrogel is purely elastic material. There should be no fatigue. It's just like glass. But in my experiment, I observed 
uh, obvious fatigue quite gross. So uh, this paper has been published in 2017 on EML. So we, but uh, that paper does not get a lot of attention. So later on, we uh, tested two uh, tough hydrogels. The first one, we tested the polyacrylamide arginine hydrogel. So this hydrogel has a very high toughness around 1,000 joule per meter square, but its predict threshold is just 50 joule per meter square. This message is very strong. So how about the hydrogels invented by Professor Jin Bingo? We also tested it. So the toughness is only the toughness is very is still very high. It's uh, three thousand joule per meter square, but its particular threshold is still much much lower than its its toughness. It's only two hundred joule per meter square. Yeah, this work is done by Wen Lei and Tong Qing, my colleague. So after these two works, people started to notice that fatigue is a serious issue for hydrogels. So. Over here, so uh, people want to uh, develop particular resistant materials. So two heroes, uh, Shao Ting and Xuan He, they published a sensor once paper last year. They found that the PVA hydrogels is really particular resistance because the, the aligned polymer chains in the crystalline zones will resist the particular crack growth. They also enhance the particular threshold to 1,000 joule per meter square. It's a landmark work. At the same year, Zheng Jin and Zigang, they also published a paper. Uh, they describe a universal principle to design the fatigue resistant materials. They also enhance the fatigue threshold to 1,000 joule per meter square. So after reading their papers, I'm thinking, what can I do in this field? I found that all these uh, fatigue resistant hydrogels they have very simple geometry. Unlike our natural uh, tissues, our tissues have very complex geometry. So I want to do the 3D printing to uh, develop uh, complex shaped particular resistance soft materials. We can do three material, we can do three material uh, systems, hydrogel to hydrogel, elastomer to elastomer, and uh, Hydrogel to hydro, uh, elastomer to hydrogel. First one, I will introduce the fatigue resistant hydrogel. So, so thing, they are already saw that PVA hydrogel is fatigue resistant, but the PVA is uh, too specific. It's just one type of material. Can we do more material systems? Here, we use the digital light processing technology to prepare fatigue resistant hydrogels. So first, we use a DRP printer to print a hollow hydrogel structure. Then we immerse it into a solution to improve the modulus of this hollow structure. Then we cast the soft hydrogel matrix onto the hollow structure. Finally, we will get a composite hydrogel. This composite hydrogel have two components. One is, soft, uh, one is soft hydrogel, the other one is hard hydrogel. So they are bounded by topological entanglement. This method is universal. So it, it can be used for any chemistry, any recipe to demonstrate that uh, this hydrogel is fatigue resistant. We print uh, a hydrogel structure mimicking heart valve. So this is a homogeneous hydrogel structure. We can see after the 500 cycles, this structure begin to fail. So you can see at the edge, the structure fails. But for this, but for this composite hydrogel, it's really fatigue resistant. So it can be for 25,000 cycles. We also measure the pressure gradient across the structure. So for the composite one, you can see it's very stable uh, even after uh, 10,000 cycles. But for the homogeneous hydrogel, it's, it's, very, it's very brittle. So here is our testing system for evaluating the fatigue resistance of the hydrogel. This paper is, uh, is under preparation. So after finishing the fatigue resistance, and uh, hydrogels, 
we can also do the fatigue resistant elastomer. So uh, we published this paper last year. We use the direct ink writing technology to manufacture the composite elastomer. First, we print the hard elastomer, then we inject the soft elastomer precursor into the holes. Because the two because the two elastomers have similar composition, so they can form the topological adhesion automatically at the interface. So we can print different uh, uh, patterns like square, like harnacle. Uh, we can also print parallel fibers. This composite elastomer is very fatigue resistant. We measured the, the fatigue property. We found that it has a high fatigue threshold of 500 drew per meter square. Another good thing for this composite elastomer is that it's, it's very elastic. Even after 10,000 cycles, it's still uh, very elastic. We found many uh, fracture mode for this uh, elastomer. So if we compare our composite elastomer to common elastomers, we can find that our composite elastomers have a much higher fatigue threshold than common elastomers. Actually, it's 10 times higher. So here is our composite elastomer. Here is the natural rubber. Here is the field elastomer. So when we want to do the fatigue resistant hydrogen to elastomer, we are encountered by a, a problem. The problem is the adhesion between hydrogen and elastomers. So if we look at our plants or animals, they are always adhesion between hydrophilic to hydrophobic part or between the soft part to a hard part. So this uh, multi-material system guarantees the function of these tissues. But for synthetic hydrogels, the high water content impedes the adhesion of hydrogels and other materials. People measure it, the interface toughness is only 10 drew per meter square. Actually, uh, when I was a student, I also measured the adhesion. So the adhesion between hydrogels and elastomers is only one drew per meter square. So people know the issue, but people don't know the answer until our another great guy, Yu and Xuan He, they published a, a landmark uh, paper on natural material. So they demonstrate a general principle to design the strong hydrogen adhesion they use a top hydrogen matrix and uh, the strong interface interaction. So after their work, there are many methods to uh, improve the hydrogen adhesion between hydrogel to uh, elastomer, to biological tissues and to uh, metals, glass, many, many substrates. But we found that these methods cannot be used for 3D printing. Why? Because in 3D printing, the ink is in liquid like, uh, is in liquid state. So you don't have a solid, uh, solid pre network. So you cannot do surface modification. So here we propose a new method. We add the interlink initiator into the ink of elastomers. Then we print the elastomer ink and the hydro ink. When we cure the two polymer networks, the interlink initiator will form interface chemical bond between the two polymer networks. So here we printed the hybrid structures. This structure can bear very large compression without any uh, fail, failure. But for the uh, hybrid structure without the adhesion, so it's very brittle. So you can see after compression, it uh, fills. We also, we also prepare the honeycomb structure. Here we use a very, very tough hydrogel matrix. We use the microgel reinforced hydrogel. So we can uh, achieve a, a very high adhesion energy. It's, a, it's around 5,000 drew per meter square. So we can also tune the adhesion energy by tuning, by tuning the benzophenol concentration. So with, with this progress, we can do a lot of things. Here I will show some functions for this 3D printed soft materials. 
The first one is the M cable. The M cable is first demoed by Chan Hui and Bao Hong. Here, we print an M cable. The interface adhesion is very, very strong. So you can see it's conducting music to signal and it can bear the hammer shape. So without the adhesion treatment, you cannot do these things. This is crazy thing. So the next thing we, are, we are want to do is to do the safe morphic. Because we have a, a hybrid structure of hydrogen and elastomer, when we immerse the structure into water, the hydrogen will imbed water and uh, trigger large volume deformation. So it uh, can deform from a flat flower to a 3D shape. We also do the butterfly and the, this, this animal. So, but this safe morphing is still very simple. Recent years, we have been doing the safe morphing of magnetic hydrogels. We, uh, we proposed a method to activate the magnetic hydrogels. So magnetic hydrogels is a polymer network embedding magnetic nanoparticles. When you put magnetic hydrogel into an alternating magnetic field, the magnetic nanoparticles will be heated. The heated nanoparticle will trigger the collapse of the polymer network because here we use a polynipum hydrogel. It's a thermal sensitive. So here it's just a, a magnetothermal effect. If we design a bilayer combining the elastomer and the magnetic polynipum hydrogel, we can achieve bending deformation. With bending, we can do a lot of things. Here is a video. The black strips are magnetic hydrogels. The magnetic hydrogels are adhered onto wisp shape strip. You can see uh, in the magnetic field, the magnetic hydrogels are heated, yet yeah, temperature is increased. So when the temperature increases, the hydrogel will collapse and uh, cause the whole structure to bend into a helix tube. Yeah. This process is not very fast. So, so we want to do a uh, 3D printing. Now we we know how to uh, enhance the adhesion between hydrogel and elastomers. We just print the magnetic hydrogels and the print the elastomer substrate. When we cure this hybrid structure, the interface adhesion is is very strong. So we activate the hybrid structure in an alternating magnetic field, it will uh, change the shape from a flight state to a bending state. So now we have achieved a very uh, complex deformation like helix, like uh, flowers, like dragonfly or flower basket. We, we even print a, a turtle. Yeah, the turtle is composed of four printing layers the turtle can bend its front leg in the magnetic field. Yeah, the, the bad thing about the uh, alternating uh, magnetic field is that the actuation is low, but the good thing is that we can use the magnetothermal effect to kill cancer cells. Here is, a, here is a coil. When you put the magnetic hydrogel here, the magnetic hydrogel will increase the temperature when the temperature increases to 45 degrees C, the cancer cells will be killed. Here, uh, here is our experiment. So the black, oh no, the, the transparent dot are live cells. When we use our magnetic hydrogels to heat the, the cells, we can, we can see the blue cells and the transparent cells. The blue cells are dyed. The, so we, we even designed a gripper. So the gripper can grab a, a, a hydrogel embedding cancer cell and then grab the whole structure and kill the cancer cell inside. Yeah, so now here uh, comes my conclusion. So in this talk, I introduced uh, the, I printed the fertility resistant elastomers and hydrogels. I also printed the elastomer hydrogel hybrids with strong adhesion. So 
I also saw some functions for the printed structures like under cable or zip morphing. So uh, I will acknowledge my collaborators, Professor Zhigong Shu, Professor Ti Jun Wang, Professor Jerry Qi, and Professor Tong Qing. And uh, these works are done by my graduate students. So, uh, so thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much for this wonderful talk. I think everyone here has learned a lot. Now we will have 10 minutes for Q&A. If you have any questions, please uh, click uh, the handshake button at the bottom of the screen and then I will I can pass the speaker to you. Or you can tap your question in the Q&A window or chat window and I will pass your question to Professor Tang. Please join our discussion. And may, maybe we can start with our panelists. Do any panelists have any questions? You can raise your hand or uh, if there are questions. Abdel, yeah? Hi, Jingda. Very, very, very cool talk. Congratulations. Um, I had a question. I Maybe you've looked into this already. When you print this, uh, 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 um, I think you called it an elast elastomeric composite, right? With different configurations, right? Yeah. Have you tried to do, because that can give you a lot of uh, uh, room to design anisotropic materials, right? So you can have different uh, mechanical properties and different toughness that will yeah. be nice to, to, to replicate uh, tissue, for example, right? Have you, have you looked into that and what's the, and um, following that, what's the resolution that you can print for, on your grid, for example? So, uh, good question. So. Yeah, for the anisotropic uh, property, uh, so actually we we found that, uh, especially for this fiber reinforced structure, so the the toughness uh, perpendicular to the fiber is very tough, but uh, parallel to the fiber is very brittle. Yeah, so the printing resolution is around uh, one hundred microns. Yeah. Okay. So because we use the direct inter writing, so the the resolution is not very high. But mm -hmm. if we use the if we use the DLP printing, so the, the resolution is is high. It can be yeah. Um, yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, could I? Uh, Ask a question. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I use iPad, so the camera is a little bit strange to me. Uh, I I have a question that you use DLP 3D printer technology to uh, build the the, uh, the yes list structure, and uh, uh, I have two questions for this uh, stuff. Uh, one is the resolution, and uh, the other one is. Uh, about the material, and I'm worried about the biocompatibility of the uh, hydrogen. Even though you show the video to build a hard valve, uh, I'm curious, does it really uh, use the in the biomedical uh, treatment? Yes, good question. So, so for the resolution of DRP printing, now we can achieve about 10 microns. Yeah. So for the for the material now, uh, we are using unbiocompatible material. So the material is not quite biocompatible. Uh, but uh, but uh, later on we will do another book. So uh, based on another material, use this uh, platform. Yeah. Now we we also want to do animal test. Yeah. If if it's so. Oh. Uh... Okay, uh, and uh, uh, I still have a qu one question for the demonstration that you show the actuator can kill the cancer cell. Yes. Right. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm curious at what the meaning to kill, uh, use a grapper and a grab, uh, use a, your grapper to catch a cancer cell and uh, kill it. So, uh, so uh, yes, this is, this is a question. This is also my question. So, <laughs> so, uh, uh, 
we we want to uh, we want to do uh, in the future we want to do a an injectable structure. So if we have an injectable structure, we can inject it into the cancer site, and then uh, we put the 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 mouse or animal inside the the coils. The coils wow. can hit and and kill the the cancer cells. Uh, I think that may be more prom promising. <laughs> okay, uh, yes. Bing Bing In has a question. Do you want to? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hi, hi, Jingda. Hi. Oh, can you see me? I can hear you, but I can. Okay. okay. Yeah. So very, very, very nice, uh, very nice presentation. Thank you for your. For your, for, your, for your introduction of your work. Uh, I'm a PhD student from uh, University of Toronto and McGill University, co-supervised co by Jian Yi. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, so I, I have a question about uh, uh, the last slides you show us the demonstration. Actually, it's a, it's a question similar to Guo Yong. Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, also, I'm wondering the biocompatibility of the printing material because you introduce inco incorporate some magnetic particles, right, and also some polymers. So, uh, first, so first question is, uh, what's the biocompatibility mm -hmm. if you use this technology in suit to uh, to grip uh, the the cancer cell? And also, I'm wondering whether this technology will kill, will inferior the normal tissue, the mon normal tissue cell. So I, that's, the, that's also the question following Go, Go Yong, because uh, I'm, I'm very curious about why you choose this demonstration <laughs> than others, right? Yeah, so uh, for the biocompatibility of the magnetic hydrogel, so people study it a lot. So, uh, Actually, uh, the the hydrogel part is uh, is okay, but the magnetic particle is yeah. not very. Okay. Yeah. So the second the second question is about the, the, the normal cells. Actually, the uh, when the temperature is is very high, about uh, forty five degrees C, it can kill all cells, not just uh, cancer cells. So yeah. So so yeah. So people are doing injectable uh, injectable hydrogels. They just inject the hydrogel into the cancer sac. Yeah. So so it it will not kill uh, other cells in the, in that case. But uh, I'm I'm wondering if if you use the like, I mean if the if the soft activity is is doable, right? So I'm yeah. I'm wondering what's the force range? What's the force range of the actuator? I'm not sure whether the mechanical deformability will cause any mechanical uh, bad things to the to the normal cell. Yes, the the force will be will be low. The force will be low. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, yeah. we have uh, one more question for from uh, Ashish Lenda. Ashish. I'm here. Yeah. Hi, very good talk. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, I'm an assistant professor from the University of Southern Maine. Um, uh, yeah. I was just wondering if the if the direction of the printing you've seen has any effect on the on the fatigue properties that you've been studying. So, so can you, can you, can you speak it again? The noise is, yeah. is the voice is very low. Um, I'm sorry. Is it is it better now? Yes. Yes. Now it's better. Yes. Yeah, so I was wondering if the if you've uh, seen any effect or studied the effect of the direction of printing on the on the fatigue properties that you've been studying. Uh, the 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 printing what? The direction. The printing. Oh, okay. So, the printing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, for the for the uh, for the printing of uh, hydrogels, we we do not uh, see any difference in printing directions. Mm. 
Hmm? Okay, and that's because of the, the the structure is kind of uh, amorphous, more more. Is, so it ends up being isotropic. Yes. So we we don't have any uh, any microstructure design for the for the ink. So so it's it's uh, just uh, homogeneous ink. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So there is one more okay. question in the Q and A, but uh, uh, let let me just uh, ask it, and uh, you uh, Jinda, you just give a brief answer. Okay. So, the measured toughness of 1D composite can increase when the height of the sample increase, right? Because the sample height controls the fiber length. So do the uh, 2D composite have the same thing? When the sample height increase, the toughness increase. Yeah, this is a good question. So actually we, we did not explore it, but uh, I think, uh, uh, it may it may increase with the, the height. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's um, move to the second speaker. Thank you. Abden. Thank you for uh, thank you, Jingda, for your excellent talk. And I know you are gonna to leave uh, because you are very late there. So. Yeah. Thank you. Let's give a. Uh, our thanks to Jinda. Thank you, thank you.